everyone, welcome to Quick Coach. My name is Amelia Roberts and I am here with another trainer of mine here at Pragmatic Works. This is Austin and I am gonna be coaching him through the PL300. We are gonna be using questions from Cert XP today and we are looking at level one and we're gonna do section four. So let's go ahead and get into it. Are you ready, Austin? I'm ready. All right, here we go. All right, I'm excited because uh, I have a little bit of Power BI background, but not a lot. So I really want to go through and learn more about uh, how to go through and be a data analyst. This question looks pretty long, Austin. So I think it's really important to make sure you read very carefully because I see a lot of numbers and percentages. So let's go ahead and check this one out. After connecting to the data source, you enable the column distribution feature in Power Query Editor for a sales table focusing on the region column. The statistical breakdown for the data within the region column is as follows. Valid 94%, error 1%, empty 5%. There are 60 distinct, eight unique based on the column distribution shown above. How many different values are in the region column? Oh man, I see a couple different ways this can go. It says 60 distinct, eight unique based. Like how are the different values? I'm not sure. Uh, I'll go with eight. All right, let's check eight and see how this goes. Submit answer. Oh. oh no, that was not the answer we were looking for. The answer is 60. The distinct count shows all the different values in a column, including duplicates of null values, while unique values do not include duplicates or nulls. As you can even see here on CertXP, we have a quick coach here, Greg, providing some more input on this answer. But we can see that the answer was 60. Let's keep going and see if maybe this answer here can also help us in future questions. That's a little testing tip for you friends. If you answer a question a certain way early on, or it gives you some indication on a question later, it's good to remember that information. Absolutely. Let's check out what is next. What is a common cause of the query timeout expired error in Power BI? Okay, well, a timeout could lead to a, a bunch of different things, but my, my first guess just kind of goes with my gut here, network connectivity issues. Ooh, that's a good guess. Let's go ahead and try it out. Oh, oh dang it. It says the answer is exceeding data pull limits set by a query timeout. So when you're pulling a lot of data in from the Power Query, if it's too much or the load is too much, it may slow down and time out your pull. So it's good to make sure that you're not pulling too much or that your device can handle the pull. Let's keep going. Remember this information, Austin. It might help you later. I'll do my best. <laughs> I'm not doing great so far. Hopefully I can <laughs> improve from here. All right. Which of the following options correctly explains the difference between distinct and unique values in Power BI? All right, let me, let me take a second to read through some of these. So distinct values and unique values are two terms that are used interchangeably. Now, I don't think so. There has to be some sort of difference, right? Distinct values and unique values have no relevance. Uh, there has to be some relevance. I'll, I'll eliminate the first two just from like common sense, little test taking tip there as well. Distinct values refer to the total number of occurrences of a specific value, while unique values indicate the number of different values present. That could be. And then the last one, distinct values indicate the the number of different values present in a column while unique values to refer to the total number. Oh, it's just like the inverse of one versus the other. I'm going to go with C. You got to see your way out. So I'll go with C on this one. <laughs> Good choice here, but oh, no. Man. Yes. This was, 50 50 shot. this was a tough one. Very wordy, which is typical of a Microsoft exam. You do sometimes have very long questions and very long answers, and you need to sort through that information. Now, we did have a question earlier about distinct and unique values. So we could have pulled our information from that earlier, but the entire point here, the answer is distinct values indicate the number of different values. So distinct different is how I like to personally remember it. And then while unique values refer to the total number of values that occur only once. So my thought process is always unique once. So making that correlation, or even before you look at your answer choices, think, what does distinct mean? What does unique mean? And then make a choice based off that. 
Our next question, after connecting to the data source, you open the Power Query Editor and enable the column distribution feature. Mm, Austin, this question looks kind of familiar as I'm reading it. It kind of looks like something I looked at earlier. Let's keep reading and see if there's a difference or if it's actually asking me the same question again. You have a products table with a model name column. The statistical breakdown for the data within the categories column is as follows. Valid 97%, error zero. Empty, 3%, 73 distinct, six unique based on the column distribution shown above. How many different values are in the model name column? I'm gonna go with 73. All right, any reason that you're choosing 73? I see 73 distinct there, and I think again, that's like where we're going with this. And I see distinct and unique again. We've had a couple questions regarding this. So knowing your vocabulary and what those words mean can play a big part. And Austin obviously knows his vocabulary. Let's see if it's paying off here. Oh, yay, Austin, you got it right. The answer is 73. The distinct value count shows all the different values in a column and our question wanted all of the names in that column. So. We got this one right. Let's keep going. You're on fire, Austin. All right, let's go ahead and read this question. After connecting to the data source, you enable the column distribution feature in Power Query Editor. Once again, another question just like what we read, but there's probably a slight difference here. So let's look at our Percentages here, we have valid 94%, error 1%, empty 5%. This time we have 60 distinct, eight unique, and it is asking us our actual question here after all that paragraph. So make sure you read it all, find what it's asking you. And it says, how many values appear only once in the region column? I'm gonna go with where it says eight unique based. I'm gonna pick eight for myself on this one. Why did you pick that one, Austin? Because again, I'm learning through this. Hopefully like looking to see how we can uh, figure out what each of these things mean as we go along. All right, submit answer, awesome job. The answer is eight. Remember, unique, once. It did give us that word once in our question. So referring back to the word unique is probably in your best interest here. So congratulations, Austin, another one correct. Let's go. Next question says, what is the default timeout for the connection to an Azure SQL database? Hmm, I'm not sure on this one. I'm gonna say it's not unlimited and 10 minutes seems like a long time. Um, I'll go with five minutes. I'll, I'll, I'll just kind of go in the middle somewhere. Uh, one minute maybe seems a little bit too short. Could take a query that's running a long time. So five minutes. Well, let's find out. Five minutes. I liked your way you worked through that process there, yeah. Austin. But, oh, it is 10. Yeah, that time it didn't pay off. You do only have a 10 minute timeout with an Azure SQL database. In order to keep it, the connection open longer, you do need to have that option to enter another value, all right? Okay, okay. But I did like your thought process. Sometimes thinking it out like that is the best strategy if you are unsure. All right, let's check this next question out. You have combined two tables together through an append operation. The resulting table must have no duplicate values. Which actions should you take to meet this requirement? Hmm, this one's tough because this can be a, there can be a couple things here. But yeah. just looking through the all the uh, answers, split column by delimiter. I don't think that's necessarily maybe going to be something that we have to do. It didn't mention delimiters inside of the question. I also don't think there's any sort of uh, extra values trimming the column data. Although there could be something there, we might be uh, needing to do that. Uh, since I know we need to do actions from the question, uh, I'm going to say that we need to, of course, remove the duplicates, but also create an index column as well. These are good options. And I really like that you noticed in the question, it said actions. It gave you that S. So plural means multiple answers. So we're going to choose remove duplicates and create an index column. Let's see what we've got here. 
Ooh, so close here, Austin. So you did get remove the duplicates correct here, but you could also trim the column and that would get rid of some of those values as well that you're not going to need. So it was a really good guess, but not quite what we were looking for. So unfortunately you would get this entire question wrong if you don't pick the exact two. It's not like back when we were in school and you got partial credit. Mm, so well, that's fair. It makes sense though. All right. After connecting to the data source, you open the Power Query Editor. We're back at this very similar question that we've heard before. Let's go ahead and jump down to our percentages here and find out our question. So valid 97%, error zero, empty 3%, 73 distinct, six unique, and our question is how many values appear only once in the model name column? Okay, well, just based on these quick coach sessions I'm already having with Amelia, the only once tells me maybe that we need six unique base. I'll go with six. And I think our quick coaching is paying off here, Austin. Six is correct. Unique, once, great indication of what you are looking for find that number within that paragraph of a question. Awesome job, Austin. You're doing great. Next question says, how can you resolve the query timeout expired error in Power BI? Okay, well, increasing the query timeout setting, this seems something like could be enabled by default and it's not really resolving the problem. It's just gonna give us more time to pull from the source. Uh, reducing the number of columns or rows, that would definitely uh, shorten the query. Changing the data source schema, performing complex subqueries and nested queries, hopefully that's not at, because that can be kind of difficult. Uh, maybe I'll go through with just reducing the number of columns or rows. Let's try it out. Let's see what happens. And you are right, Austin. Yes, if you get that error, reducing what you're pulling in from the Power Query Editor is probably your best bet. It's going to speed up your load time. You'll even notice if you do different reports, some that you're pulling large amounts of data in compared to ones that are smaller, you will see a difference in the amount of time it takes to load that data in. So that should be a clear indication that you probably should reduce what you're bringing in. I always tell people in my training sessions because they're like, do I have to clean my data first? Can I just go back and do it later? Well, you're gonna slow down some efficiency. So cleaning it up right off the bat, probably your best bet. How can you address the couldn't find file error during data import in Power BI? So I'm guessing if it couldn't find file, it's maybe not pointing to the right location. So I don't think it's necessarily with this schema or anything like that, or network connectivity could potentially highlight the query and select transform data button, but I'm just gonna go with change the file location in the Power Query settings. Let's see what happens. Awesome job, Austin. This is actually a common thing that we see here with Pragmatic Works when we're working in training sessions is they get that error and they just need to find where that file and where that data set is located again and re-guide Power BI back to that original data source so that it can pull from it efficiently. So awesome job. All right, so I got a chance of redemption here, right? Yes, you do. We love a redeeming moment, Austin. Let's see if you learned anything today during our quick coach session. Okay, so I think for this one, asking about the different values, I'm gonna go with 60 distinct. So I'll go with 60 there for this one. Yes, you are right. Distinct, different, right? Unique ones, distinct, different. Austin, I think you're learning. All right, let's see this next one here. Query timeout expired. Uh, trying to remember what this one was. I think it was exceeding the data pool limits, uh, maybe? I don't remember the exact answer here. This was a while ago, so let me see if that one's right this time. Let's find out. Hey, Yay, <laughs> Austin, you are learning. Awesome job. Let's see what else we can redeem ourselves on here. Okay, this was the tough one and I got it mixed up, but we we're asking about the difference between distinct and unique values. Remember, there's a couple of them and we were looking at BC, but I, I think they kind of randomized the order of this. So I don't just want to automatically go to like one of the ones that it wasn't. Let's read through these again really quickly. Distinct values and unique values are two terms that are used interchangeably. That's not correct. The second answer says distinct values and unique values have no relevance. Maybe not correct either. Distinct values refer to the total number of occurrences of 
of a specific value, while unique values indicate the number of different values. Now that's not right because I remember Amelia said distinct different. So what I'm gonna go with for this one is D, distinct values indicate the number of different values present. All right, here we go. And yes, we learned our difference between distinct and unique, and that is clear today in our coaching sessions. So okay, so this one I remember I said five minutes last time, but it's 10 minutes, longer than I thought. So 10 minutes for this one. I love it. You are learning so quick, Austin. So we talked about, I thought it was creating an index. We got to remove the duplicates. So I know 100% we got to remove duplicates, but the other one's going to be trim that column data. And I think I should get that one right. Amazing. You have learned it. Yes, we need to remove those duplicates and trim up that column. Awesome job, Austin. You have finished this session of Quick Coach. It has been an awesome job. You are on your way to becoming a Power BI butterfly right here in our quick coaching sessions. Awesome, and I can take this again too to get that 50%. I don't like a, a bad grade on my test or anything like that. I can go back and take that again and again and again to improve my score and look like I uh, knew it from the first get go. Thank you so much for coming to our quick coach session. I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day.